How y'all doing? Hey, I was reading through Joshua and I was in chapters 11 and 12. And I was again struck with the totality, even the brutality by which the Israelites took the promised land. I mean, it was like for real, right? They didn't mess around. God gave them the land and told them to completely destroy the enemy. And when the Israelites obeyed God, He gave them victory after victory after victory. What can we learn from this, church? Is this a message about being brutal in our culture today? Is this a message uh, about the church, you know, getting out there and hurting people and driving people away who, who, aren't, who aren't loving Jesus like we think they should? Not at all. Not at all. But this is a lesson and a reminder that obedience results in victory. In other words, doing things God's way brings God-sized results. Man, we need to remember. We need to apply this to our lives. Doing things God's way. Every area of our lives, doing things God's way brings the victory, brings the blessing, brings the kingdom results that God intended. So, okay, check this out. Here's just a taste from, from Joshua. Here's just a taste of how the Israelites obeyed God when they were told to go and possess the promised land. We're in Joshua 11, beginning of verse 9. Joshua did to them, meaning did to the enemies in the land, as the Lord had directed him to do. He hamstrung their horses and burned their chariots. In other words, he took out their ability to continue to war. Verse 10, at that time Joshua turned back and captured Hazor and put its king to the sword. Now Hazor had been the head of, uh, of the kingdoms of the area. And he removed, in other words, Joshua removed the evil leadership from the land. Verse 12, then Joshua took all these royal cities and their kings and put them to the sword. He totally destroyed them as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. All right, again, that's intense. It's like going all the way with it, doing exactly what God said. So as we read like scriptures such as Joshua 11 and 12, they give us a picture of God's nature. They, they let us understand more of God's heart for His people. See, what I want us to see in passages like this is that God has promises. He has inheritance for His people, and He doesn't want anything or anyone to stand in the way of His people living in those promises that He's given them. So how does this apply to us today? Well, as children of God, we're children of God. In Christ Jesus, we've been grafted into the family of God. And as God's children, we're supposed to take the land and bring His kingdom, His kingdom, His ways, His love, His righteousness, His truth into our world. We've been commissioned to take the nations. And just like in the days of Joshua and Caleb, this requires some serious spiritual warfare and action. Taking the land involves a fight. I mean, I, I'm, I'm here to tell you, it, there's spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is a fight. It's no joke. It involves destroying the enemy. However, let's make sure that, that we approach this the correct way. After all, we're reminded from the Apostle Paul that our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against people, so people are not the enemy. But our struggle is against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That's where the battle's fought. That's where the enemy is. So our warfare is, is not a physical one. It's not about physical violence, but rather a spiritual move that brings victory in the heavenlies and on earth. However, check this out, the spiritual warfare, it's going to be a common experience in the life of a Christian. If you've been able to live your life as a Christian without engaging or experiencing spiritual warfare, then man, I need to invite you, let's, let's start running together. Because spiritual warfare, battling, pushing back darkness, it's just part of living the Christian life. I've said it before, the Christian life, it's not passive. Rather, the life of a Christian is a life of action. I mean, it's just not a rom-com, like I said a few weeks ago, right? It's also an action movie. It really is mostly an action movie. It's a life of warfare against Satan and his demons. It's a life of passionate obedience 
to our commanding officer, and it's ultimately, check this out, it's a life of victory. Praise the Lord. So, I want to ask you, what's the enemy placed in between you and the promises of God for you, for your family, for our community? Come on, what kind of roadblocks, what kind of walls have been placed there? How about lies? Has the enemy been feeding you with lies? Well, I want to tell you, that here's what the Lord tells you to do. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ Jesus. Maybe addiction is what the enemy is, is using to mess around with you. That, that's what's keeping you from God's promises. You know what God's answer to that is? Who the Son sets free is free indeed. If you're in Christ Jesus, you've got to know that you are free and you can live that way. Man, that addiction, that thing, that doesn't have that power over you anymore. You're walking by the Spirit, not by the flesh. Maybe confusion is clouding your vision and, and blinding your next step as a follower of Jesus. Let's remember, God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. And for many, fear. Fear is the, is the biggie that's keeping people from grabbing hold of the inheritance and the position and the victory that we have in Christ Jesus. I want to just say to anybody who has any fear or anxiety, here's the message for us today. Let's remind ourselves, let's preach to ourselves right now. For God has not given us what? A spirit of fear and timidity. But what's He given us? He's given us a spirit. He's given us a new creation, a new, a new personhood in Christ Jesus, a power now of love and of self-discipline. Isn't God good? He is so good. We've got to remember, we've got to remember, though, that we're still going to be in the battle. The enemy wants to rip us off, rob us, kill us, destroy us, John 10, 10, right? But Christ came that we might have life and that to the full. Jesus also said this, though, from the days of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of heaven, it's been forcefully advancing and forceful men are laying hold of it. We've we got to understand this is a real battle, but we have the victory. But because it's a real ba battle, we got to take up arms, God's way. We've got to take up His Word, His ways. The, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Remember that. Scripture says not carnal, but they are, they are powerful enough. They, they can break down the strongholds. We've got to take up those weapons of the warfare, and we've got to advance God's kingdom. And let's also remember this, that God is still a promise-making and a promise-keeping God. Can I get an amen? Because all of His promises are yes and what? Amen in Christ Jesus. I thank God for each one of you. And I just want to say, Lord, bless us. Lord, continue to open up our eyes. Holy Spirit, guide us so that we can grab hold of everything, Christ, that you've grabbed hold of for us. You are our King. You're our Lord. You're our commanding officer. And we trust you in everything and with everything. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a super blessed day.